All right, so I've had a few requests to do this video. Uh, this is a video tutorial on setting up a program called Sonar to automatically download your TV shows that you want to see by using a torrent client such as uTorrent or Deluge. Uh, before I continue, you need to have prior knowledge of using torrents, how to add torrents and using a torrent client, as I wouldn't be going through that. Just the settings on how you link the torrent client to Sonar. Right. I'd also recommend that if you use a private torrent tracker such as IP torrents, that you set up a separate download client for that, as Sonar usually interferes with the downloads and the folders that they go into, and you usually need to re-upload your files on a private tracker. So have that separate and the directory separate from where you download through Sonar. Also, um, you need to set up in the torrent folder where you download your torrents separate folders for completed torrents, incomplete torrents, and where you want your torrents to move into. I'll get into that now in the torrent client settings. So the first thing you want to go to as laid out here is directories. Now I'm using uTorrent. So if you're familiar with uTorrent, you would be um, able to follow along. If not, it should be somewhat similar in whatever torrent client you use. So I've made um, folders for my new torrents uh, and my completed torrents. The new torrents would go into a folder called incomplete. And when they're finished downloading, you try to move them into the completed folder. Now, this step here is important as later on I'll be going through uh, setting any web UI settings for you torrent that allows the torrent to be moved automatically by Sona. So go ahead and set up your folder, your main folder, put a completed folder and an incomplete folder. The rest of the settings here are totally up to you. But just make sure that this setting is enabled and I'll get to why it's important in a bit. So next we move on to connection. And if you have this option enabled, untick it. Make sure that the port remains the same. You don't want this port changing because you're going to have to link this to Sona. And if it changes, Sona would not be able to access your torrent. The other settings here basically up to you until we move into label. Now, labels allow you to not only sort your torrent based on the labels that you give them, but it allows uTorrent as well as Sonar to move the files that you've downloaded based on the labels into the directories where you place the labels. So, for example, I've added a label here called Sonar TV Shows. Uh, keep note of the name here, whatever you put, right? So, you put in the name here, you click here, add the, the label, then you select from the list below what you want sonar tv shows and you select where you want your um, files to go so when my files are finished downloading and the have appended they will move into this direct so the next thing that we're going to set up is the web ui so you click advanced you click web ui uh, you enable the web ui you put in your username you put in your password and make sure that the port here is the same port as before and then we set up the web UI. So you're going to need to download a file from uTorrent forums. Uh, I'll show you how to get there. The links will be below the video. Right, so you go into the forum. You're selecting uh, uTorrent web UI. Let me go through the process here and see. So this is the basic forum here for uTorrent. You click web API. Then you click uTorrent web UI. You scroll down until you see here. And you download this file. So as soon as this file is finished downloading, we're gonna wanna app such as 7-zip. The extracted folder is gonna look something like this. Make sure that you copy this file and we're gonna place it into our uTorrent folder. The easiest way to access that is you press Windows key and R, you bring up your run menu, and you type this in. When you hit OK, it will bring up your uTorrent client folder. You paste in the file here, and then now we'll enable the web UI in our browser. Now remember the port that you specified under directories, sorry, connection. Keep a note of this port. We're going into the browser, and we're going to type in this into your address bar. Now this here is the port that you chose. Make sure and put the port there. When you hit enter, you should see a pop-up coming up 
with your username and password that would have been the username and password that you enabled here in web ui either enter it there or change it to something that you want it to be make sure that the port is the same you go back enter that there and when you load it should look something like this this is basically just a web interface for your uTorrent client and what we need to change is in settings so we click the gear we go into directories and this is where the directories play the important role in moving the files so there's a new option through the web client called append the torrents label enable this make sure your directories exist make sure that they're the same as we had before and we're saving this now this is the main thing that we need the web ui for you can go ahead and close it and we're going back into the uTorrent settings in the main client double check your directories make sure they are the same and now we're going to handle queuing when your torrent has finished downloading any client it's set to seed automatically now with the way that sooner and you turn the setup is that the file can move while it's being used in other words while it's being seeded it can't move now there's a setting in sonar that allows you to create a new version of the file and place it in your sorted series folder but we wouldn't want to do that as it creates duplicates so this is one of the other reasons why i recommended having a separate torrent client uh that on your private tracker because if it is your movie file you can't seed and with these files you want to stop them seeding before you place them in the folder so i have set up the ratio here that it's minimum zero 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 right through uh, when it um reaches the seeding goal which is zero it would stop so as this is set up once the file is finished downloading it wouldn't seed or it would seed for just a few seconds and then the label settings would append so the file would move into the separate folders or where you want it set up now as i go on into sonar there's an option where you can either choose to leave the files viewable in your torrent or you can move them completely but we'll get into that there's one option that i want to mention that is extremely optional is that when a torrent has finished downloading you can actually allow programs to run on that file so let's say it's a zip file you are downloading and you select say 7 zip when the file is completed downloading it would actually unzip the file automatically for you now that isn't always depending on the person so use that at your own discretion and that is basically it for the settings in the uTorrent side so we're gonna move into setting up sonar so we're going to go into our browser i'm going to type in this or just going to google sonar we'll come to the home page of sonar you can go ahead and read up on it check out the features see what the support is like but we're just going to go here download we're going to choose the windows because we're on a windows client if you need to choose another one well that's up to you now i'm not going to actually run through the actual setup of sonar seeing as i've done that already but i'll just uh, Say a few things to note, uh, make sure and install it as the Windows service, let the installation run through, and then when it's done, you launch Sonar from your desktop or your start menu, whatever. Right, so we're going to get into setting up. Alright, so at this stage, your Sonar is going to look a little different than mine. So we're going to get, because mine is already set up, so we're going to get into setting up Sonar. We go into settings, we go general tab. Uh, make sure that your advanced settings is shown. If not, make sure it's unshown by clicking the ticker here, saving that, refresh the page if you need to. We're going to change this port into something familiar. Just make sure it's not the port of something that you have another program set to, such as uTorrent. We're going to enable our basic browser authentication here, put in something that you'll remember, make sure this is saved. We're going to change branch to develop, and we're going to save. You're going to move over to system you're going to click updates and we're going to make sure that the latest version is installed if the latest version isn't in that when it's finished it should automatically update and restart if not you have the options here to either restart the client or shut down the client if you're getting any problems doing that um, you can manually do it through task manager after you updated it and it, let's say sooner doesn't reopen if you're still getting trouble once you're sure that the update is finished installing uh you can restart your pc if you're still getting any trouble i've um seen that 
it gives some trouble where after you have updated and you try to relaunch sooner it's not relaunching but a simple restart will fix that right so we're going to go back into settings and we're going to go media management so most of these settings here are optional right um i have renamed episodes to no because what happens is when sooner down um the request to you torrent to download the file the file is then downloaded and it's renamed by sooner into a format that you would like now it's it's handy when you want to sort your files and have them named appropriately instead of the name that the torrent file would have been so let's say this was the uh, name of the file that you downloaded it would rename it into something similar to this right the problem with that is if you're looking to set up say your plex to manually import subtitles or to find the exact file again online remember you rename the file so you may um, encounter some difficulties so if it's not a problem you can go ahead and select rename episodes and it'll rename it for you in whatever format you would like i've changed my format to this if not select no again if you can't see some of these options remember for each tab that we go through you have to enable the advanced settings and save it and refresh your page if you need to this option here at the bottom the one i was mentioning about when you're seeding a file you sometimes you can't copy the file or create a move the file sorry this is an option that you can enable but i'd suggest leaving this alone and leaving it where when the file finish downloading it stops seeding and you move the file make sure you have create empty folders enabled make sure you change the season format to what you would like um ignore deleted episodes and make sure download proper's means well anything that you have over here with the question mark you can get a short summary of what it is right so make sure these are enabled like this uh, save this and we're going to move to profiles all right so moving over from media management into profiles uh, make sure you ad enable your advanced settings your profiles basically are the profiles that you want to download your files in so let's say you want all your files in 720 you could set a profile for only 720 if you wanted it 1080 or higher you download it at that quality if you want it in well i wouldn't suggest downloading anything below 720 but um that's totally up to you you create your profile by adding you name the profile whatever you like and you select the quality of the files that you would like to download now there's an option here called cutoff i will explain this um after we've added series and i've shown you how to download series i'll come back here and explain this so you go below um delay profiles what this is is uh usually when you're looking to download a show let's say a show is scheduled to come out tonight at nine usually a torrent um and the show is an hour long so it finish at 10 usually you'll get a torrent a few minutes after within half an hour of the show finishing it's airing right now what happens is so most times initially you would first hd torrents you would get um the 720p quality first whether it's um web download or whatnot and then later on within the next few hours to the next day or so you will start to get the higher qualities whether it be 1080p or proper hd now what you could do is you can set a delay you select torrent because we're not using usenet and you set a set a delay so let's say i set 120 minutes this is minutes here it would actually wait three hours before it sh looks for a show so by that time chances are a better quality might come out if someone uploaded a wrong file you wouldn't download the wrong file even though that's highly unlikely but that's totally up to you to set up a, a delay profile such as that so now we're going to move over into quality so quality definitions are basically the size of the files that sona is going to look for so let's say you have selected to download a 720p file now usually let's say a show is an hour long 40 minutes an hour right the file size of um these shows are usually similar they range somewhere between 700 if it's a a shorter show or 800 so to about let's say 1.2 to 1.4 gigs depending on 720 or 1080 right so if it is that you know the quality that you want to download let's say like you only download the hd right you deal with these here and you set the minimum limit and the maximum limit so for example 
say you wanted to download a show that's HD 1080 and you know usually these files are about 1 gig 900 for the minimum let's say even 700 if it's a, a 20 minute show right sometimes if there's an error in your upload or someone uploaded a, a bad file chances are it will mark 1080p and somehow it's uploaded to the, the torrent site before it's pulled but the file size is only like 20 meg to prevent sona from sending a request to download these files you put a minimum so let's say you're looking for 1080p and you know 1080p wouldn't be anything lower than what i like say 684 megs it wouldn't look for anything lower than that it would ignore all those results and it would look for something along these lines now if it is that you don't want a extremely large file for hd uh, and you prefer a larger file for blu-ray then you can set a maximum limit so let's say you find a file that's um 1080p but it's like 10 gigs and you don't want to automatically download that you can put a cutoff now there's an option that i will show you when you go into the, the shows that even though it doesn't automatically find the show you can manually go and look for the file size for specific shows for example let's say like a series such as sherlock where one episode is almost like a movie the file size for one of those um, episodes will be pretty large so it may not be picked up by the automatic system if it is that you um you're not too sure make sure and set the minimum limit and set a uh, unlimited maximum limit by selecting the the end here again if you're not seeing options remember to enable your advanced options okay so we're going to move over into indexes now indexes are what you would usually call torrent sites or where the torrent files are downloaded from so they would be like a repository where you would go to find torrents right um two of the main ones that people use for downloading tv shows are kickass torrents and rerbg which i have enabled here i'll show you how to enable them there are other options but it's up to you if you are members of those sites to enable them like there's some for anime and so on so we go add uh, let's say we're adding kickass turns now i already have it enabled right um so i'll have to change just add something and we're going to make sure that these options are set and we're going to test now before we test if you don't use our ss uh, that's totally up to you i have it enabled so we're going to test and we wait until they see okay testing is succeeded don't just click save make sure you click the down arrow you click save and add and it will add here and you can see what is enabled for each one you add so same thing with RERBG I would have done um, you set the options here for the age of the torrent if you want how long the retention is that's how long it's been there on their servers um, you can set the RSS sync interval if you're using RSS if you don't know how to use that I suggest not um, playing up with that too much now the restrictions here are something that i have put in from these restrictions that you see are my personal restrictions so let's say um i want to download a torrent and let's say these things that i've enabled here i'm a custom downloading torrents from these guys that i mentioned killers public issue these are things that you may have seen it would look for the torrents with these first and then it would download it now if the torrent you put anything it must not contain I don't want my torrent files to have any of these things enabled because usually these um uh torrent files that i have a bad or uploaders that i have bad experiences with or i just don't want their quality so i would put them there so even if um let's say you search for 1080p through the automatic system and it finds one but it's uploaded by this uploader i don't and i don't personally don't want that it wouldn't download that you can manually go and do it but it's up to you and these are as i said before these are mine you enter the tags whatever you would like uh, one thing about the tags if it is that you wanted to um these settings to apply to only certain series you put the tags to the series below if you wanted to apply to everything that you don't you leave it blank right when you want to add a restriction you click the plus arrow here what it must contain what it must not contain as you would have seen before and that's basically how you set up the restrictions for the indexes so now we're going to move over to setting up the download client which would have been what you set up before what is either utorrent or deluge we move over here make sure advanced settings are shown again now um usually i would use these two i have deluge enabled as a backup but i use that for my private tracker so right now we're going to set up uTorrent now you would click add as i already have it set up i would go to uTorrent here same way you would edit it this is the name of it you can name this whatever you would like make sure it's enabled local host obviously is your local computer so that would pull the ip there make sure and choose the port 
that was enabled in uTorrent. If you can't remember where that is, you go into uTorrent, you click connection, and that's the port there. Right now, the username and password. This is what you would have set up previously. Make sure you put the same thing there. Now, the category. This is the same thing that you have enabled where the label is in, in uTorrent. If you can't remember it again, you go into uTorrent, you click Web UI. Sorry, you click label, and you would see the label name here. Make sure it's the same as you have over here, because what happens is this is what it links to uTorrent to append the label. You can change the priority to whatever you would like. You test it. You make sure it's connected. Again, save and add, not just save. The other settings are, now this is important here, completed download handling. This is what allows Sonar to re remove the files from your torrent download folder and place it within the folder where you have put your shows right again don't put your shows that you your sorted series and the series that you downloaded don't keep it in the same folder as your torrent download folder so enable completely download handling now remove this is where it would remove it from your torrent list so let's say you download um the flash and usually when you finish downloading you would see it finish in your torrent client this would actually remove it from there as well as remove the file from um the other option the complete download handling Enable fail download handling, make sure, because obviously if the, for some reason it fails, it would try to re-download the file. Let me move on to drone factory options. Now the drone in Sonar basically is something that searches your folder that you set, the drone folder, for files that are downloaded. So for some reason, if um, let's say the automated system downloads a file, it places it into the folder that needs to move the file into your sorted series folder. But it's not working for some weird reason you have the drone folder i would suggest not putting the drone actually they have several warnings here about that don't put the drone folder as the same folder where you have your sorted series or your downloaded files because what happens is whatever is inside that drone folder it will take that file and place it within its respective folder so let me give you an example if you're downloading your torrents into one main folder, let's say just your torrent folder, all the incompleted torrents are there, all your completed torrents are there. Now, how it works is once a file starts to download, a file, a partial file appears in your download folder, right? If for some reason um, you have a power outage or you shut down your torrent client or something, the file is still there. It may not be complete, but it will still be taking up space in your hard drive as a, a, a placeholder then, right? The drone will see that as a downloaded file and take the file now, rename it if you had rename enabled, and place it within your sorted series folder as the file is downloaded. And Sonar would now read it as this file has been downloaded and it wouldn't look to re-download. When you go to play the file now, you will see it start to skip as what happens when you download a partial file. Because the drone doesn't check the hash to see if it's a complete file. It just sees a file there and it moves it. So make sure you use a drone as a, a last resort if for some reason the, um, the completed download handling doesn't work. Right? The drone factory interval is how long it would search for new files. So let's say you have the drone folder. Every 25 minutes I have it here set. It would check for a new file. If you're not too sure how to use a drone, I would suggest not setting it up or put it in a folder where you wouldn't uh, use it often. And also as a fail safe, if for some reason you can't get the download handling to work, whether it was your labels giving trouble or something um, not working as it should, still set up your directories for your completed downloads. When you when you download your files, you manually remove them, put them in a folder, and then you could place them in the drone, and the drone would handle it and put it in the sorted series as you would have it. So these are most of the settings that need to be enabled for you torrent and or deluge and sonar to download shows so we move across into another setting which allows sonar to link to various applications you may have so at the moment i have it linked to my plex server you can link it to other options that you may enable or programs that you may link such as your email or push bullet things so you could actually get notifications when a show is started downloading when a show is finished downloading it is really nice so it, it helps you automate, especially if you're running a home theater PC or NAS to manage your system properly. I just mentioned Plex. 
Plex TV, you can check it out. I strongly suggest that you download this and start using this to watch your shows and your movies and whatever content. There's, you could go to the quick start guide which shows your introduction into exactly what Plex is, how it works. It links to your mobile devices, it links to your tablets, it links to your... and it organizes your shows. It has a really nice GUI. You can add channels. You can invite other people to look at your channel. So let's say you have your own local um, little server with, with shows. You can actually add people to it and they can watch it. People within your home network, outside your home network, once they can access it. There are lots of reviews and guides how to set up Plex. I may not do one uh, or I might just link one. But I strongly suggest using Plex when you're looking at your shows. The last setting we may want to check is metadata. If you don't know what this is, just leave it as is. If you do, you can use Sonar to link to this to update your metadata. Now we move over into series. Your series might look a little different because you don't have anything set up as yet. Basically, you just add series. You may have a big green button saying doing the same thing. Now you have two options. Either you can import existing series on your disk or you can look for your series. Just as even if you have it on your disk, most likely it's not sorted or it's not in the sorted folder. So I would suggest adding the series first. So let's say you have Sherlock, right? Yeah, I've downloaded already, but it wasn't downloaded through sooner. Let's look for Sherlock. It would start switching. So this is what I'm looking for, right? Now you go ahead and you add it in the sorted folder where you would have all your sorted series, create the profile and so on. I will show you how to create a profile just now. And then you would put the files that you have already downloaded, put it in your drone, and the drone would um, extract it from there and put it into the sorted series. So let me show you how to add a series that isn't here. So let's say there's a show called Limitless. So I want to add this show to my list. So I find Limitless. I choose the directory. Now this is where I have my sorted series. So all my sorted series are in this folder, which is separate from my completed folder in my torrent folder. Right, so I'm going to monitor missing because I don't have any, and I'm going to choose my profile here. So, as I mentioned before, when you were choosing a profile, how you wanted to download shows. So, let's say I wanted this only in 720, I don't want any 1080p versions of this, I would choose 720p here, or if I want 1080p, same thing, if I want just whatever HD it has, it will download here. Now, this is where the cutoff point comes in play let me add the series obviously i want to create a season folder series type standard daily anime whatever you want to choose right so if you add an anime you will choose it so i add the series right now i can go to the series here and these are my options so you get a little synopsis here it will show you okay it's a new show so it only has one season even the special so let's say there was a, a webby sword or something all these are options here so when you're looking at a series all right all right it's loaded there you will see these little tags here. If it's white or blank, it means it's not going to look for this. I have it on my sonar set up so it wouldn't look for specials. You can en enable it if you want for, let's say, entire season. It's ticked so it would look for everything in the, in the season. Let's say I don't want to look for everything. I can remove that. Let's say I only want to look for episode 7. I tick there and it would only look for episode 7 right you get the name of the episode if you click on it you could actually go to the episode you can see the history if you ever look for it and you can actually search automatic search manual search right so let's say i want to look for options you have my options up here these are the files you can select the quality of the files if you download anything you can refresh it would look for the um the files on your disk you could act Preview all the files you downloaded if they're and you can rename them manually. This options allow it automatically search your torrent site for the files and then well obviously your edit series button is here where you can change the same options you have had when you were adding the series. Let me just quickly touch on the profiles. So right, so let's say how I added limitless there, right? I added it as 1080p or I added it as all. If it is that Tonight there was a new episode and the first thing to come out was this. It would download this, right? So now it would send a request to uTorrent, torrent site. It would find the torrent, send it to uTorrent to download. Let's say by tomorrow morning, the Blu-ray version of 720p came out. It would send it again because it's a higher quality. It would download the new file. When it's finished, it would remove the old lower quality file and replace it with the higher quality, which is a really nice feature. And it would continue doing this 
until it reaches the cutoff. So if I had put the cutoff at 720, it wouldn't look for the new files, which may have been the 1080p files. So that's how the cutoff works. So let's say I go back to the series. I go back to limitless. Limitless. So this is how the setup for a series looks. So let's say I don't have the entire season down. I only want to check out the first episode. So these uh, things here show you all right, the episode is missing from me this, which means you don't have the episode, right? So that means that if I had it enabled, it would automatically look for this episode. This will actually tell you it has not aired as yet. It will tell you when it aired, how long till the next episode. You have two options here. You can automatically search or you can manually search. So let's say automatically search. It would start searching the two indexes, which would have been Kickass Torrents as well as Aria BG. Now I can leave it automatically search and eventually it should find a file or I can click manual search. So here you would see now, um, sometimes the time may vary depending, I guess, on the internet connection. And what you would see pop up here is you would see all the options within the both indexing sites, whether it's Kickass uh, and RERBG, and it would download the most appropriate file. So in the background, you could probably see it already started downloading a file because it already found one. Okay, so this is what happens when you manually search. So all the options with what you had enabled shows up. Now, if you see here, there's a exclamation mark. This appears because remember I put in specific tags before what I want for my files or what I download or upload. Sorry, I wouldn't want to download from. So as you can see, if I hover over, it's equal of higher quality to what is already downloading. So even though I'm downloading something, it wouldn't go and try to download the same quality then. Let's say I look at here. You see, there are many reasons. It's smaller than the minimum that I allow for 720. Uh, the quality is the same, right? Not enough cedars. All these things are um, factors which would stop it from automatically downloading. So let's say it's downloading a file and I don't want that version. I can use the parameters here to select. Like, so let's say I want only 1080. It'll have 1080p. If I choose um, by pairs, I can choose whichever one I want. Say I wanted to download this one. All I would have to do is just click this here and it would add to my download key. You turn it. Now, when it's already downloading, the progress is shown here. If you go on the file itself, you can actually see the history of how many times it tried to download, what file it actually tried to download. You'll get a summary if you hover over it and so on. You could stop this, see how long the torrent was here and so on. And you could go back and you could search. Now, let me show you what happens when it starts downloading. You go into your torrent and you would see here the file has appeared. Right, it started downloading. It would have a label Sonar TV shows on it. Once the label is added, it means that the file will then move into the respective folder which the label has um, created. So let's say the label as I have it is Sonar TV shows. It would create a folder named Sonar TV shows and it would move into that folder within the completed folder. So now that I have a file here, for example, that's almost finished downloading. When it's downloaded, what's supposed to happen is you would see it move from the incomplete folder into the TV shows folder and then from there it would move the Big Bang Theory within the Season 9 folder. That entire directory is within my sorted series folder. So let me, so this is the incomplete folder where you can see these three files downloading. This is my Sonar TV full show and this is the Big Bang Theory folder where I already have the episodes that follow there. So let me resume. So we can see the file is approaching completion. Um, again, make sure that your labels are attached to these files. Otherwise, what would happen is when they finish downloading, they would just end up in your completed folder and they wouldn't automatically move to the respective folders. All right, so it's finishing up. Well, that's my seven zip. All right, so you see it moved from incomplete and it's now within the Sonar TV shows folder. So what would happen is, depending on how fast Sonar updates, it would remove the file from here and place it within here, within the Season 9. Usually this is done quite quickly. What I can do, I can go into Sonar. Okay, as you can see, um, just from switching from the folder to Sonar, it actually was already um, doing the process in the background, so it was updated. So the file now is on the hard disk in the respective folder, which is the sorted series folder in the Big Bang Theory. So you can see it was downloaded. It shows you the size here. If I go to Plex now, 
you can see Plex is updated. It has a one here, which means that episode that is unwatched is now in the folder. If I go into it, the season was out of play, and you will see it here. Now, I've already watched this episode, so I can mark it as watched. But basically, that's what it does. It, where you connect it to Sonar, Plex will automatically get updated. So this process that we would have seen would be the entire process where I Suna would search for a file on either Kickass or RARBG, um, download the file using uTorrent, and then transfer the file from that torrent folder into your sorted series folder. Um, when you're finished adding your shows, they show up here in your Suna's homepage. You can edit the series manually. You can update the library for each series that you select. You have options to do that. You could also um, use the season pass for each series that you select. So let's say you want to um, download a specific number of seasons for a certain series, you can do it through here. So you have many options within the Sonar library. You can also update the library here. When you go to Wanted, these are the shows that you have outstanding that you want to download. You could either search for missing, you could select manually what you want to download. And here is the option to rescan the drone factory folder. So if you put stuff in the drone folder, make sure and come here to rescan if it doesn't scan automatically. That should be it for the tutorial. Um, it's pretty much straightforward. If you have any issues with it, you could always uh, message me. Feel free to comment as well. There are also many reviews online about setting up these things individually. More so Plex and editing labels. Sona isn't that popular. It used to be something called NZB Drone, so you may find some tutorials on that. Just remember as well that you're using torrents, and torrents are susceptible to piracy implications. Because remember, this is basically pirating software, pirating TV shows. Use it at your own risk. Use torrents at your own risk uh, compared to streaming as well. Remember, you're physically downloading files, and you're going to have these files in your system. I accept no liability and thanks for watching.